Attention Libros and everyone else who has to dig volleyballs. Libro, libero, they're both right. It just depends on what country you're in. I call them all bros. I was one after being a middle for my entire career. Ended up a Libro on the US national team. Uh, training for the 2004 Olympics. Unfortunately, I was cut about a year before the Olympics, but I learned a lot of stuff and now I wanna share it. Here are five things I use to help me make better plays. When a coach tells you to read, what does that mean? It can mean several different things. I don't know that anyone can tell you exactly what to be looking at. So here's what I looked at when I was reading plays. I wasn't necessarily reading the hand of the hitter, because let's be honest, you can't see the hand of the hitter when she's hitting it. What you can see is her relationship to the ball. Is she leaning back from the ball? Is she leaning towards the ball? Is it too far inside? Is it too far outside? Is she leaning to one side? Um, does she look balanced? Does it look like she's gonna hit it hard? These are body language type things that you can see that can give you information about where the ball might go. It doesn't mean it's gonna go there. So here's my number one get balanced. That moment right before you're balanced, you'll hear your shoe squeak. This is a good thing. You'll also hear your shoe squeak when you're changing directions really fast, which is also a good thing. That balanced stopping motion should happen right as the hitter is in her arm swing, just before she contacts the ball. Some coaches will call it a pre-hop, um, and I see a lot of players doing that pre-hop at different times. So you do it too early and your body settles into the floor. And you do it too late and you've missed the ball. So I find that my pre-hop happens just before she's gonna contact the ball. I've dug the squeaking noise in because it has its own rhythm. Watch it off my hand. Here's what balance looks like and feels like. For this section, I'm only worried about balance. I don't really care where she digs the ball right now. I'm really only checking for multiple steps and leaning. After you get balanced and you've turned your feet off, just for a split second, you have to turn your eyes on. So the second thing I do is look. You have to use your vision. What are you looking at? What do you see? Can you see the hitter around the block or are you standing behind the block? Also, look at the ball come off of the hitter's hand and then you're ahead of it. The reason I have such a hard lock in on watching the ball come off her hand is because if I read her body language and it looks like her relationship to the ball is leaning to the left, and she hits it right, I don't get suckered. I was balanced and I saw it. See if you can track the ball off my hand in three, two, one. Ah. So here's an example of just because I'm facing somewhere doesn't mean I'm gonna hit there. This is how I test to see if she's balanced enough to see.
I'd like her to only use one move with her platform, not two. Here's one, two. But that's another video and I'm trying to focus on just what she sees off my hand. Okay, I'm gonna start testing her by moving around while I hit, and this makes sure that she is watching the ball come off my hands and not watching me. Here's an example of being able to see it, but not balanced enough to get it. Balance, now. Here's a segment where she's balanced and I can tell she sees the right thing, but she doesn't know how to get there. So you saw the ball come off of the hitter's hand. Now you have to take a step towards it. I know some of these balls aren't going to go where they need to go. I'm just worried about her taking a big step in the right direction. One more. Push. Good. Okay, now same push. Going this way. Yeah. Almost. Get that left shoulder. One. Come on. Back to the Two steps. One, big step. Go. Yes. Good. Come on. Go. Yes. Almost. Let yourself go. Stay in your eyes. Go. Oh, bigger step. You saw it. You're seeing the right thing. You're making the right um, reaction. But I want the reaction to be tied to your feet, not to your arms. So you've taken your step, you can't just touch it, that's not enough. In order to get the ball to go to target, you have to use what I call steering. Steering comes from your shoulders, just like you would steer a car. I love using this analogy because a lot of people that I work with drive, and if they don't, certainly you see your parents drive. So when you have the wheel, sometimes you only need to turn a little bit. But if the balls hit really far away from you really quickly, you're gonna have to steer a lot. And that's kind of like making a U-turn. When a car is making a U-turn, if you only steer it a little bit, you're only gonna get a little bit out of it. You're not gonna make the U-turn. So you really gotta crank it to make that U-turn. Same thing with the ball. If it's hit really far away, you really gotta crank that. Steering is in a lot of my videos. Bend. Yes. There. That was far. See, look how far that was. 
This is a good example that putting more power in your step increases your range. And she can actually push off from here too. You can see that ball was taken outside of her knee or midline. Here's an example of a ball being taken. She took a big step and it, she takes it inside her knee and she's squeezing and freezing. This ball goes to target. If you're steering correctly, the ball should be on its way to target. So to make sure that it goes there, final thing I'm going to talk about is holding your finish. Now veteran athletes and professionals that are good at getting the ball to go to target consistently maybe not need to hold their finish as long as someone who is still needing the feedback. So if you're younger or just beginning and trying to work on steering the ball and getting it to go to target more consistently, hold your finish. The reason I hold my finish is A, it gives you feedback, and B, sometimes my body is going that direction and I need the ball to go that direction. So if I'm sliding, I need to hold to make sure the ball goes over there. Here's a drill I call stomping. The goal is to take a step that actually takes you to the ball. So if you stomp your foot underneath the ball, it should just hit your knee. Notice that I start in a defensive position with my chest down and I finish in a defensive position with my chest down. You can do this all by yourself or with somebody tossing it to you. Also, toss underhand or overhand so you get lots of variation in where the ball goes and you can increase your range. But look out for these tendencies. Not focusing on your foot can make you lead with your hip. It may also make you stand up with your chest up. Focusing on your knee. And lifting your knee to kick it. Once you've programmed yourself to focus on getting your foot there, now you can add the platform. So do the exact same thing that you just did, but instead of letting it hit your knee, put your platform out instead, because your foot should have taken you to it. Then to focus on getting more range, use a big hip push and your foot plant to get balanced and dig the ball. It actually has its own little rhythm if you listen. At first, it may not hit their knee perfectly, but at least they're training their eyes to see where their foot should go. As a supplement for steering, I like to do a side lunge, but it's not just a regular side lunge. Most side lunges will take you to the side, have your weight over your leg, which is good for your uh, quads and glute, um, but your chest is also up and you're just focusing on the legs. So I like to modify mine for defenders so that you're not only taking the lunge, but you're sticking your hip out to the side and you're wrapping your shoulders around and in. while maintaining the chest down. 
This way you're not only closer to the floor, but you're also training your body to take step to the ball this direction, but turn the ball this direction. We'll do it to the other side. I know we really broke this down. Honestly, it could be broken down even more than this. All of these things happen in a flash of a second. So you may miss a few balls trying to get these five things to come together, but keep working on it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope some of these things were just different enough for you to improve your game a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe and share.